you share, there's a lot of like mental challenges <sighs> by the restaurant and the boss and the Ukraine and the mental and, and this. So we worked with together with mindfulness. Like, can you explain a bit like what made you want to reach out to me in the first place? Yeah. Well, how did that originate? So I've reached out to you because of the nerves before the fight. Like leading up to the fight, we've got so many mm -hmm. thoughts going through your mind. Yeah. And working with you has helped me not delete the thoughts, but has helped me realize when I can stop and decide to stop thinking about that thought and ch change it into something positive. Yeah. Or like, you see them when we do the... Uh, the stuff we do on the computer when you say green flag, orange or red, yeah. the anxiety it gives you. Yeah. That has really helped me to figure out whether I wanna keep thinking about what I'm thinking of or just be present and enjoy the moment. Yes. I've reached out to you because I think you're very professional and I think you know what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, I just appreciate everything you do and how present you are and helpful you are toward us. Like, you're always there with us, week by week, you lead me, you message me, you try to like help me, you tell me how is your day going, did it go well, did it go bad, and you never really get upset with me if like I go, oh man, today I only done five minutes and I couldn't do the 10 minute. Mm -hmm. You always have a positive impact to that, you always say, okay, don't worry, tomorrow maybe push it to seven minute, and the day after it will be 10, and slowly, we got up to 15 minutes. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's why I reached out to you because I think, yeah, you're the man. Yeah. You spoke a bit about the red and the green and just for people that are not aware, like one of the exercises that I always do yeah. is I'll have the person that I'm working with tell me their thoughts. Yeah. For like five minutes and I'm just yeah. like, and that usually shocks people when they look back and they see, wow, what is it that I've, you know, thought in those five minutes and how random and yeah. how maybe repetitive some of them are. But that's the exercise that we do. We look back at it together and I say, you know, give it a color rating. Does it make you feel anxious? No, okay, green. Does it make you feel a little bit anxious and orange and very anxious? Then you go it's to red. Amazing. Yeah, I love that exercise because it really makes you realize how much goes through your brain mm -hmm. without even thinking. It's genuinely so random. Like, but if no, but if you've never done it, you could never understand how yes, right. Thank you. Like that yeah. is like yeah. you gotta try it to understand what I'm talking about because when you like, when you just say it like that, it seems mm. ah, what do you mean red, green, or or orange? orange. Yeah. And what do you mean random thoughts? No, I decide what I'm thinking of. Yes. Genuinely, yeah. you're not. Mm. Like that's what's scary about mindfulness. It's like how people are so convinced about they decide what to think of when reality is your brain just thinks of the most random stuff yeah. every minute and usually it's the scary stuff and the stuff it that is. you're worried about right yeah and the yeah. stuff that you need to do yeah right? that's closer to the fight say for example when i'm off season mm. i realize that my thoughts are just genuinely so random like mm. oh what's my puppy gonna eat today and then mm. i think oh should i get a massage and then i think ah. Oh, my hair a bit long mm. or you know like genuinely so random yeah, yeah. and then i think blueberries raspberries like mm. dumb mm. but when i'm fighting in a fight camp then it's so different like the thoughts are like it's the red ones, uh, right? how many pts do i have yeah uh, uh, uh have i done the sprints today uh what am i gonna eat oh chicken beef mm -hmm. uh my brother my family mm. um then the thoughts are just so more related to what goes around you yeah. rather than just random thoughts when I'm off season. Yeah. Like when I'm on holiday, mm. it never crosses my mind, for example, ah, mm. <clears throat> random stuff like, uh, I don't know, is my sister in the uni today? Mm. Or like, you know, mm. stuff like that. More of you think about, oh, uh, what am I gonna do today? Or mm. stuff like this. Yeah. But I realized that when I'm in fight camp, I really think about the people or the things that I care the most of. Like a lot of times is my brother, my mom, my dad, my family in general, my wife, my puppy, I don't know, uh, the fight, my team, Phil, Matty, 
like a lot of the gym box, like a lot becomes just related of the fight. Yeah. And if you've never done mindfulness, I think you never really understand why the thoughts are going through your mind yeah. and how to control them. But obviously with your help and stuff, I, I've learned how to control it a little bit more. Yeah, and just to shed some light on that, it's like, especially when we do something that's out of our comfort zone. Like yeah. some holiday, this and that, normal life, okay, yeah. cool. But when you've got a big event that is outside of your comfort zone, and we know it's outside of your comfort zone because 30 cigarettes, eight espressos, hot pounding like that. Yeah. You're doing that because you're, there's a high pressure situation about to happen. And literally your brain's thinking life or death. Yeah. That's why a lot of times we think about our family, you know, your brother, your, your this and that, your, your wife. Because when you're about to die, that's what people think about. They think yeah. about what's most important to me. Uh, yeah. And they worry about it. Yeah. And what I just try and introduce, even if we don't get too deep with it, I want the people that I'm working with, I just want to introduce them to that, hey, it's not your fault. Right? Whether you want to or not, these thoughts are just going to happen. And yeah. the, the, the closer you get to your fight, the scarier it's going to get. And the more anxious you're going to feel. 100%. And for so many people, it's, that's why so many fighters are terrified yeah. before a fight. But with mindfulness, A, it, inter it shows you that, hey, it's normal. Whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. Yeah. And let's introduce a few techniques or tools to say, look, if my fight's tomorrow, I'm going to be thinking about it all day long, right? But if I'm having dinner and I want to relax, now's not a good time for me to worry about tomorrow. So as I notice the thought, because I'm practicing it, ah, I realize now it's that scary one. How skilled are you to like, okay, let me, can you shift your, all of your concentration back to your breath? And for many people, you can't because you haven't practiced that. It's very hard. When, even when it's just a green thought, it's hard to come back. Yeah. So that's why we practice with the greens and the orange. Because when the red ones come, you have no trained muscle, then you're just going to get hijacked. Yeah. They're going to walk all over you. And you're going to be stuck there. And that's like a prison. And that's why for so many people, like, they f fighting, especially when it comes to the fight camp, they don't enjoy it. Yeah, they don't. Because they love the idea of fighting. They love sparring and stuff. But when it comes to the... The fear and like you mentioned the week before the night before the morning of your the thoughts are just going to be about that and if you don't have any tools to like how do i just stop it even for just a brief second you know how do i just like yeah. be able to clear my mind and know that even if i can't do it all the time i'm happy knowing that i can stop it just for a brief second yeah rather than just being full time in this prison where there's no hope and there's no there's no alternative it's just the negative thoughts yeah Rather than say, hey, there's a bit of choice. And the more I practice, the more I can access that alternative. Let me be present or let me think about something positive. Right? Yeah. So we worked together for about eight, nine weeks. Yeah. You know, b before one of your fights. How did, how difficult was it for you to, to grasp the concepts? And at what point did you start to see some of the benefits and what were, what, what were they? I think it's about constancy, like you've got yes. to do it every day for you to realize that it's working. Mm -hmm. At the start, I was thinking, ah, oh, this is, this is ain't working because I could not concentrate for that time. Yeah. But slowly, the more I've done it every single day, yeah. the more I got into it, the longer the period of time I could concentrate, the longer yeah. I could see my thoughts. Also, an exercise that I really liked is when you always tell me, oh, while you're going to work, be aware. Mm. And like, if your mind starts shifting, just bring it back to the present, like the tree, the colors. Mm -hmm. When you walk in the bus, the people in front of you, what's he wearing yeah. and stuff, pay attention to what's present. Yeah. And until today, even when we don't do the sessions together, like, you know, we, you're very present in my like fight camps. Mm -hmm. But on off season, I get a bit lazy with it because obviously you want to do your own thing a bit and stuff like that. So we don't really yeah. speak to each other much. But on a daily basis, I still look at the gr how green the tree is or how natural this, I don't know, the stone on the floor or like the bus I'm taking or the person standing in front of me. Yeah. 
when I'm walking to gym box, oh, what surrounds me are oh, the sounds of this bird. Or mm. I really try to pay attention to when I'm present. Yes. I know not all the time it works, but I try to do it as much as I can. Obviously, sometimes I'm just walking and I don't think nothing. Yeah. But sometimes I just think, oh, oh, geez, at that, that time, yeah, let me, let me do it. Yeah, well, but it's important because... If you didn't realize that at all, you wouldn't be aware of it. No. You would just be thinking, thinking. Yeah. At least there are moments when you realize, ah, I can choose to be present by observing exactly. the trees. Yeah. Because the alternative is once you then stop doing that, mm -hmm. you go back into, I've got to do this later. And I got yeah. that, and I got that, and I got that, and I need to go here and got to feed the dog. And, that, and that's why for me it's so important as a mindfulness coach is to teach people, hey, you're an autopilot most of the day. Yeah. And that's quite sad. It is. Because you don't realise that there's choice. But like you mentioned, even in those brief moments that you notice it, ah, it's a bit of like just taking your foot off the gas pedal just for a little bit. Yeah. And really appreciating it. Oh, I'm watching the tree and I'm seeing the stones. And rather than being all day long, I was in thought, okay, now we start to have a little bit where we're present. Yeah. And the more that we, we train that, the more, okay, even if it's only 5%, 6%, 7%, we're introducing presence into our life. But we also know in our minds that, oh, when we need to, we understand that oh, there's something that we can do. Yeah. And that's why I say for fighters that are doing it, don't come to me like the week before a fight and say, hey, can you help me? Yeah. It's like, I can give you a few breathing techniques that might help when you're panicking. But if you really want, not, to, yeah, yeah, if you want to grasp, work. yeah, you know, the process and understanding, look, let me show you the green thoughts. Let me show you the orange and the red. And let's train because fight week is going to be a lot of red. And it's not just like I have a scary thought, let me breathe and it's done. No, that scary thought's going to come back and come back and come back. And you're going to have to have that, um, you're going to have to have that mental... Strength, going back to your anchor kind yes. of vibe. Yeah, yeah you but, can... but, but you're going to, you need to have the, the muscle where it's not just once. It's, yeah, going, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to have to be again yeah. and again and again and again. And for a lot of people that's draining yeah. because those that don't know it, the thought comes, they're panicking. Those that have it a little bit, thought come, oh, I take a breath. Oh, that actually feels a bit better. But they're not ready for the next one. Yeah. And the next one. And in the day, you might have it a hundred times. And it's exhausting. Yeah, definitely. Especially the morning of. Like, oh my God, it's so, so scary. Okay, take a breath. But are you ready for the next one? And the next one? And the next one? And when they come and say, hey, you're up next. or you're And all these little things that could be triggering. That's when you really need to, I realize that I'm just panicking. Go back into it. Yeah. And that's pack, pack. And that's why the more you do it, the more you can A reduce those chemicals that being put reduce that initial fear and just kind of snap yourself out of it. It's like, okay, come on, you know, I'm Amro. Then you start to go through all your positive things, you know, I'm the best, I'm this. But you forget about that yeah. in those moments of fear. Definitely. You know, and so it, it's a but how would you describe it, for example, if you were talking to like one of your friends back in Italy now. You know, if I say to you, hey, you did this mindfulness, because I struggle myself to teach people that like you said it's something you need to experience, yeah, yeah. right? But, but you know, how do you, how do you describe it? What, what descri is mindfulness for you? If I had to describe it with one word, I would say freedom, because it frees you from bad thinking. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> sometimes you're like in a prison in your head, and you're thinking like a lot of bad things and stuff with mindfulness i think it just helps you get out this like red thoughts or like dangerous thoughts or whatever you're thinking mm -hmm. and stuff like that i think um mindfulness is just i think it's great for everyone like forget your fighter or whatever yeah mm -hmm. i reckon 90% of the people that need need mindfulness yeah because no matter what's your job or whatever you do mm -hmm. in your life you're definitely stressed like you got a red thought yes. 100% yeah and i feel like mindfulness is like a pain relief it's like it helps you clear that red thoughts and like 
it helps you clear your mind even for that split second exactly it's yeah. not it's not a long term thing like yeah it's not you don't look, do it and then okay i'm yeah great exactly for the rest of my like life. if you're no. i don't know if your cat di died yeah. and you don't want to think about your cat just died mm. you're gonna still thinking about your cat died mm. but it's just gonna be you're gonna try to like go back to your anger mm -hmm. disappear for a second think about it again disappear yeah. It's like, yeah, it comes wipe, it comes wipe, mm -hmm. but it will come again and again and again. But I think the more you do it, the smarter you're going to get with it. Yeah. If you're willing to perform at your 110%, which is that 10% is the difference. Because look, at the level we are, everyone is at 100%. The mental is that 10% extra. Work with G, because he knows what he's doing and he really understand the fighter life. He's been in it. He's been with us for what over like he is friend of Phil since they young and kids. So he's seen Phil from day one starting the Muay Thai. So he's been around Muay Thai for all his life now. Yeah. So he really, really, really understand fighting. So start mindfulness to become the best version of yourself. This is all I'm saying. This is it. Perfect, the best yeah. version of yourself. Exactly. I like that. Not just only physically, but... Yeah, mentally, not yeah. physically. Physically, yeah. we are the best version of our, ourselves in a fight camp because yeah. you're dieting, you're healthy, you train every day, yeah. twice a day, you're muscly, you're working hard. Mentally yeah. is when you have to become the best version of yourself because if you're the best version of yourself mentally, then you definitely are physically Yeah. because you're mentally strong. So Yeah, and what I added to that is like, my important role, you know, when I'm working the fight is, is happiness. Yes. You know, I think you can be the best version of yourself when you're enjoying it and you're yeah, happy. I'm not saying it doesn't, happy doesn't mean you don't get scared. Yes. It doesn't mean that you don't get afraid and that yeah. you don't break down and cry, that you think they don't do hard work. Yeah. But it's, it's understanding that that's completely normal in life, but like, let's do it and enjoy it Definitely. so that we can be the best versions of ourselves. 100%.